Welcome back to Anthem. In this video we are going to be going through a range of build that I've been using and I think is crazy strong. I did record this previously but I deleted that video. It took me 50 minutes to record and probably about 45 minutes worth of editing was put into it to get it up to like a 10 minute video and that wasn't even half done. That probably would have been like a 20 minute video. But in that one, I rambled on about loads of different stuff. But this build is going to be focused around one thing, being the Thunderbolt of Avenia. So the Ranger as a Javelin focuses on a single target and does huge damage. Instead of being like the Colossus and the Storm that deals on damage in lots of enemies. So your role is to deal the most damage possible to the bosses and the stronger like shielded enemies like the scouts and the hunters of the scar faction. The inscriptions you'll need to work on those yourself but your main focus is to increase marksman rifle ammo and damage. So if I show you the thunderbolt of Avenia I've got two of them at the moment 41 and 45 in power. I do have a third which is 38 power, that was my very first masterwork drop at level 23 before I had even seen an epic gun. I was crazy lucky to get it to drop. But we have two of them, I'm not going to go into detail about the inscriptions, you can take a look as we go through the stuff. Because every single roll, like every time you get this weapon to drop is going to be completely different. And some of you will probably have the ability to craft it so you'll be able to switch up the inscriptions to try and better the ones I have. But in general, this is an upgraded Scout Marksman Rifle, which is semi-automatic. It comes with a perk that allows you to have a 33% chance to deal large electric damage. That is the main focus of this build. That is going to be the Shield Ruiner. That's why I've titled it that. And this gun is only going to be good to use. Like, everyone's going to have their own opinions on the gun, on what guns they prefer to use. But for me, this is one of two masterwork guns I've had so far in the game. The other being the Wyvern Blitz Sniper. And this gun for me is very enjoyable. The only problem I see with it is that you have a 33% chance to deal large electric damage. The standard damage is maybe less than other guns would have. So if you would rather something more powerful, then you're going to have to find another weapon. If you're okay with only having a 33% chance to deal large electric damage, your standard damage being like pretty basic, then this will be the gun for you. That 33% chance isn't a guarantee. You're not going to fire three shots and definitely deal electric damage. Sometimes you can do six or seven. Sometimes you'll have two consecutive shots that deal the electric damage. So I've got two of those and we're going to be doing some gameplay at the end. What we're going to talk about next, I'll show you the components because a couple of them are important, but we'll go through those at the end. The Assault Launcher, I recommend using Pulse Blast because it's a detonator, and before we go into that any further, the grenades, if you don't have grand opening, like I don't know what other masterworks are available, your best bet is to take Frost Grenade because that is a primer. If you look to the left of the P where it says Pulse Blast, you'll see a cross which means that's a detonator. And next to the frost grenade, you'll see a circle, which means it's a primer. And I just thought I'd add that in for those of you that didn't know, because I didn't actually mention it during the video. Not only is it a primer, it's going to freeze the enemies in position. If you're fighting an enforcer, you can get around the back of him and hit the crit points, which is like the fuel tanks. Or you can get around to the back of a turret if you freeze it and do the same thing. Obviously, weak points or like critical hits are going to be the best damage alongside combos. So the Frost Grenade is going to prime your target, it will freeze it in place as well. And then once it's primed, if you use the Assault Launcher being the Pulse Blast, that's a detonator. So you freeze the enemy, you use the Pulse Blast, the Primer and the Detonator work together, that creates combo damage. As well as that, this is Impact Combo, so there's going to be components that can help increase that as well. Another good thing which I'm going to talk about is your melee as the Ranger deals the electric damage when you hit the enemies, that is a primer. So you don't necessarily have to take Frost Grenade, I just recommend it because it's pretty good, it freezes the enemies. But on my current build I have the grand opening, I got two of these from the same Stronghold mission which was my first Stronghold attempt on Grandmaster 1. And I actually like these, Ambush's Fury is the perk, defeating enemies from above grants 75% increased weapon damage for 20 seconds, not only that, but the one I have equipped at the moment gives me 9% extra damage on my Marksman Rifle, making my Thunderbolt of Avenias even stronger. 
And also in this build, the support gear is personal preference. I prefer the bulwark point just because it's going to block projectiles when I'm trying to revive my teammates. So if one of my teammates goes down, I'm going for the res. If a rocket is going to deal knockback damage to me and stop me getting that revive, whack up bulwark point. That's going to deflect the projectile. You've got a better chance of getting your teammate back in the fight. If you choose to go with muster point, I'm not sure if this was like an exploit kind of thing. I don't know if it's been changed, but you can actually stack the muster point. So if you, for some reason, have four rangers all using muster point, whack them all down together, stand inside the little like bubble dome kind of thing. And for every one you use, it will increase your gun's damage by 20%. So if it stacks and you've got four, that's an extra 80% damage on your guns. So that's not just going to work for the Thunderbolt of Avenia. If you've got a strong sniper rifle or something, Master Point is going to increase your damage by an extra 20% for each one. Then we're going to the components, and this is the last part of the build before we go into some gameplay so you can see my build in play. And I mentioned earlier that I think it's the Pulse Blast. Yeah, that's got impact combo. So if we go into the components... Crossed Arms is actually bad for me to use, but because it's 36, I've currently got it on. It increases your blast damage by 50% of base and lowers impact damage by minus 20%. If I could switch that out, I don't know if I already have one on. I don't, but there is... I don't even know if I have it. Those two do blast damage. This one here, Convergence Core, is better to use especially if you're using Pulse Blast because it increases the impact damage so your impact combo with the Pulse Blast is going to be increased by 35% of the base and it decreases blast damage. You're not using blast damage really as a ranger. But I have Thermal Regulator for those of you that are interested in seeing the components I've currently got in this build. Thermal Regulator increases my fire damage. The only reason I've got any of these on is because of their power levels. I'm trying to get my ranger up as high as possible so I can progress with Grandmaster difficulty so that I can get the better masterwork drops. But the Thermal Regulator increases my fire resistance. I enjoy that one because a lot of the scars like the Enforcers have a flamethrower. They always deal fire damage to you. So your resistance being increased by 20% is going to help out. Crossed arms, I shouldn't have that on, but I have. I might even switch that out for Convergence Core. I've actually done it because I feel I need to. It's kind of stupid if I don't. Advanced Circuit Tree increases melee damage by 30% of the base and electric effect by 30%. So that's going to help if you're not using Frost Grenade and you're using your melee as the primer. That's going to increase the damage and the electric effect. Firearm Calibration Core is an absolute no-brainer. It increases the damage with all guns by 25% of their base. Machine Pistol Ammo, I've just got this one on for the inscriptions. The actual component itself doesn't do anything because I don't use machine pistols. But as you can see, it increases my maximum armor and shield. Then last up, we have the Grenade Augment. Enhances grenades to increase damage by 5% of their base damage. So that's the build, and what we're going to do now is jump into a quick play mission, because free play, it kind of takes a longer time to find enemies with shields. This build is based on depleting enemy shields. Okay, we are launching into quick play on Grandmaster 1. I don't know if it's going to be a silly idea doing it on GM1 just for this video. But whilst we're in the loading screen waiting for this to load up, I want to thank those of you that mentioned in my early game ranger build that the spark beam is neither a primer nor a detonator because without those of you saying that I wouldn't have researched what like how to do combos and stuff properly that's given me a better understanding I know the symbols to look out for the circle is the primer the star kind of thing is the detonator I've had to get to a part of this mission where we're allowed to fly that was a flight suppression part so if we kill this enemy, or try and kill the enemy if the Colossus doesn't do it for us. I don't have the frost grenades on so I can't freeze that turret. But if we get this guy back up. Right, our normal damage is 938 with this gun. You can see the electric damage taking effect there. So if I hover, chuck the grenades, then shoot, I'm still... Dealing 938. I don't know why that's not worked. So let's try again. Let's hover. Chuck the grenade. Get the kill. Ambush's fury. You can see it there. I'm dealing 1346. And then if I... Because I don't have the frost grenades on. If I melee this frost hound. And then right bumper. You'll see that we've got the combo damage. 
I think the frost grenades would be a better option because you can actually freeze the enemy in place. And this is GM1, so you can expect me to go down maybe a couple more times. And if I use the Avenia on this, you can see how quick the gun depletes their shields. Shields gone. And I'm I'm going to die again. Jesus, this is tough. So that was the gameplay of my build in play. You guys got to see just how powerful it is at Grandmaster 1, which is 400 plus recommended power level. I still have a long way to go with this Ranger. I might even switch up my build completely at some point. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to try and bring builds for other Javelins. I've played a little bit with the Storm, a tiny, tiny bit of gameplay with the Interceptor. I haven't played with the Colossus at all since the full release. But I'm just trying to get my power level up there. Then I'm going to switch out and use different Javelins and stuff as well. The thing to note with the Thunderbolt of Avenia is... I believe the base damage, like that's always going to be the lowest, then you've got the weak point damage. So say you deal 500 damage with a standard shot. When you hit a weak point, so you get like a critical hit, you're going to deal more damage. And then I think the electric charge is always going to deal the most damage. And that's why it's such a good weapon for me to use, because as the ranger you focus on solo targets, so you go for bosses and bigger shielded enemies. You get to shoot more bullets at them, so you increase your chance of getting the electric damage. And what I'm going to do is leave you guys with that build. I would like to know in the comments if there's anything you think can improve it. If there's a different gun you want me to check out when I eventually get it to drop. And also let me know what power level you're currently playing at. I really hope everything was clear to understand in this video. I don't normally do builds and stuff on games. So there's a lot of stuff I still need to learn as well. But I'm sure that will come in time. I'm going to be putting enough time into this game to learn a lot more about it. But that's going to do it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.